reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, Demas and Amberin of the present world deserted me and went to Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Luke is the only one with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is helpful to me in the ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left with Carpus and Troas, the papyrus rolls, and especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will re repay him according to his deeds. You too be on guard against him, for he has strongly resisted our preaching. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. Verbum Domini.
Dominus vobiscum. Et cum Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Gloria The Lord Jesus appointed 72 other disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. In whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink whatever is offered you, for the labor deserves payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat whatever is set before you, cure the sick in it, and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Verbum Domini. The Lord Jesus in every age appoints shepherds, calls shepherds to attend his flock. The call of vocation comes from the Lord Jesus. It's an invitation to pattern one's life in the image of the Good Shepherd and an invitation to daily take up the cross and to follow the Lord wherever that might lead. St. Luke, the author of the third gospel account of the Lord Jesus, provides us with detailed information about the Lord Jesus and key figures surrounding the coming of the Messiah. The gospel begins with the birth of John the Baptist, the forerunner foretold, the forerunner who would prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. From his miraculous conception in the womb of the Virgin, his infancy, the presentation in the temple eight days after his birth, and St. Luke gives us two canticles and hymns that the church has prayed as bookends to the day of the life of the church. The Canticle of Zechariah at the beginning of the day and the Magnificat, the Blessed Virgin Mary's hymn of thanksgiving and the praises of all that God has done for his people and continues to do for his people. St. Luke accounts that Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, went mute in the temple. The angel had, a, and had an announcement that he did not believe and that he and his wife would bear a son in their old age. St. Luke accounts that Zechariah's mouth was opened at the birth of his son when he took a tablet and wrote on the tablet, his name will be John, and his mouth was opened. His mouth was opened, blessing God. And St. Luke's Gospel describes the hymn that came forth from his mouth as filled with the Holy Spirit, 
The church proclaims these words every morning as we did in morning prayer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation and forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Words of the prophet, the prophecy of Zechariah, summarizing salvation. Pope St. John Paul II, in a catechesis in 2003, two years before he died, on this hymn says, the evangelist Luke, who we celebrate today, himself describes it as a prophetic hymn inspired by the breath of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, we have before us a benediction proclaiming the saving actions and liberation offered by the Lord to his people. Thus, it is a prophetic interpretation of history, the discovery of the intimate, profound meaning of all human events that are guided by the hidden but active hand of the Lord, which clasps the more feeble and hesitant hands of men and women. And that phrase is very powerful. John Paul II says, guided by the hidden but active hand of the Lord, which clasps, grabs, holds on to the more feeble, hesitant hands of all men and women. And that's us. The hand of the Lord clasps our hands, grabs our hands, guides us through history. St. Luke also gives us words straight from the mouth of the mother of God. She who, unlike Zechariah, trusted in obedience and submitted to the divine plan told to her by the angel, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. St. Luke writes in his gospel about the encounter between John the Baptist and his mother Elizabeth's womb and the miraculously conceived Messiah in the womb of the Virgin Mary. St. Luke says, the moment when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child in her womb leap for joy. Scholars point back to King David dancing around the Ark of the Covenant. This passage confirms that there is a new Ark of the Covenant, Blessed Virgin Ever Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary holds in her womb not tablets of the law, not manna in the wilderness, not the staff of Aaron, but she holds the word made flesh, the word become life, the splendor of the Father, the true bread from heaven, not manna in the wilderness, but the true bread given from heaven. And she holds the shepherd, the chief shepherd, not just a staff, in the ark, but she holds the shepherd, Jesus, in her womb. 
she becomes the true ark of the covenant that John the Baptist dances for joy at the words of his mother. St. Luke gives us Mary's hymn of praise to God, a hymn that the church has on her mouth every evening that will say this evening, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has seen the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and his children forever. St. Luke, disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, help us through your gospel to know, to see, and to follow the one that you laid down your life for. St. Luke, physician of souls and doctor, Pray for us.